How would you feel if you woke up one morning to discover that your wife, the woman you were in love with and had hoped to spend the rest of your life with, had completely duped you from the beginning and not only was in love with another man, but this man was her pimp and she was his madam and prostitute. How would you feel when you learned that your beloved wife was running her segment of a multi-state, multi-million dollar prostitution ring literally from your bedroom on your wedding night after you had drifted off to sleep? My name is Paul T. Goldman and this happened to me. Focus the raw power of the chaos that surrounds you and transform it to the strength and serenity of the warrior. Hi again, I'm Paul T. Goldman, and I want to welcome everybody to the first episode of my YouTube channel. It's been a long road, and I'm going to tell you how I got here. I married Audrey Munson in September of 2007. Audrey pretended to be a nice, sweet, stay-at-home mom of three children. The children were real. Audrey was not. When Audrey demanded after three months of marriage that I put her name on all my assets, I was somewhat suspicious of her true motives for marrying me. Six months later, when she defrauded me out of nearly $7,000, I filed for divorce. A year later, my lawyer subpoenaed Audrey's bank statements and her over $40,000 of cash deposits were very suspicious for an unemployed stay-at-home mom. Then he subpoenaed her cell phone records and the truth emerged. Ten phone calls back and forth each day, every day, to one man, the man who would turn out to be her pimp, Royce Rocco. Calls to the dozen girls who worked for her, calls to hotels, and hundreds and hundreds of calls each month to different men. I had discovered Audrey's double life. The first thing I did was hire a private eye to confirm my suspicions, which he did. He discovered that Audrey wasn't just a prostitute in this ring, she was its madam as well. When I discovered Audrey's double life, my journey, my transformation from wimp to warrior began. I undertook a twofold mission. First, to protect other innocent victims like myself from Audrey, and second, to bring down the whole damn ring. Along the way, I discovered that this ring was not just a local ring, but was also an international human trafficking organization, bringing in girls from Southeast Asia, specifically Cambodia, using forged passports to be prostitutes in the ring. This brought my wife and the ring to a whole new level of criminality, federal. So I contacted the DHS and Interpol. I started writing things down. My conversations with Audrey, the cops, the media, local law enforcement, and the FBI. I uncovered Audrey's passionate love letters to her pimp, texts from her tricks, and more, and put everything in the book. Double wife, Double Life is my story. It's a shocking and amazing book, and true. Now, I think you'll get a better sense of everything I'm talking about if I just read my book. Well, I just happen to have it here. And let's start at the beginning. In every episode, I'll read two or three pages. Prologue. Dinner's ready, Johnny, I yelled to my son over the sound of his favorite show, Spongebob. I skewered the hot dog off the grill and walked into the kitchen. It was a perfect Florida evening for a barbecue, the temperature in the low 80s with a gentle breeze. Before I could return to the grill to tackle the burgers, my cell phone rang. I glanced down to see that the call was from Bob Thompson. Hello, Bob, I answered, curious to hear what news Audrey's second husband and second victim had for me. I was her third. Paul, sorry to bother you, he shouted into the phone. No bother, I just... Did you hear the news? He interrupted. Apparently he did have news, and I took a deep breath in anticipation. Given everything we've both been through with Audrey, I always had to prepare myself for the unimaginable. No, what's going on? Audrey was arrested this afternoon, about an hour ago. 
You're kidding. By whom? The cops? The feds? The state? It could have been any of them since they were all investigating her. My mind began to race. By the state for her assaulting you at the shop and go. Well, it's about time. That was over two months ago. Thanks for letting me know. I'll talk to you later, Bob. I hung up the phone and let the news sink in. Was this only the first of many arrests to come? Will Audrey finally be brought to justice for the many lives she had destroyed? Would her true self finally be revealed in all its depravity? I thought back to my first encounter with Audrey at the West Palm Beach Cafe and how beautiful she looked. From the beginning, I was so shaken by her. When we married, I thought I had it all. A beautiful wife for me and siblings for Johnny. Now Johnny is my son from my first wife. Thank God I didn't have any children with Audrey. Okay, I'll read that again. When we married, I thought I had it all. A beautiful wife for me and siblings for Johnny. Now it was all gone. Where's my family, I wondered. I'm alone again because of Audrey. I tried so hard to build a family, but it was snatched away from me by the evil machinations of a woman without any sense of morals or remorse. A woman who, if she had her way, would see Johnny and I lying in the gutter right now, homeless and penniless, and laugh about it. I silently scolded myself for allowing her to have such an effect on me still. Later that evening, I pulled up the police website and found myself staring back at the woman who had planned from the day we met to destroy me. The image of her mugshot revealed a haggard expression that was beginning to show signs of the life she had chosen. I still couldn't believe what I had gone through. How would I let it all happen? How would I manage to get so far from the life I imagined for myself? And how on earth did I survive Audrey Munson? Or had I? You can download Double Wife from Amazon by clicking on the link which I will put below. It's only $2.99. Because it's such a unique and shocking story, and true, it has caught the attention of Hollywood. I published the book on Amazon, then I started marketing it. I did a series of radio interviews on stations all over the country, and then I found Twitter. Through Twitter, I found my audience for Double Wife. I was able to connect with people from groups such as ebook readers, true crime readers, and others. In 2012, I realized that my story would make a great movie, so I wrote the screenplay and started connecting with Hollywood producers and directors. I got a few bites, but mostly people who told me, hey, if you have a million dollars, I'll make your movie. Well, that didn't help. But a few months later, I got an email out of the blue from a director who loved my book, thought it was the most unique story he'd ever heard, and wanted to make the movie. This director came to my house with a film crew. I lived in Southern California at the time, in Orange County, and he filmed me all day long telling my story. He brought that footage to producers he'd been working with for several years, and they optioned the rights. Their next step was to find an investor. Now, I knew nothing about how Hollywood worked. I thought this would take a few weeks at most. <laughs> well, I was very wrong about that. They had lots of meetings with lots of people who made lots of promises, but nobody actually committed and wrote a check. However, they must have thought that they were getting close because a couple years ago they flew me out to Hollywood, since by this time I had moved back to Florida to help with auditions. We auditioned actors and actresses to play Audrey, Royce, and Paul. For the scenes with Audrey, I read the part of Paul. I'll tell you, I was really nervous at the beginning, but after a while, something interesting happened. Along with what I had written, I started ad-libbing, talking directly to the camera, and the producers must have liked what they saw, because on the final day, they came up to me and said, nobody could play Paul T. Goldman except me. Well, I was really blown away by that, and very happy. A few months later, they found an investor. These people committed to funding, but there was a catch. They required that we first find a distributor. Well, okay, another series of meetings with distributors. They found one, but he wasn't a movie distributor, one of the newer streaming networks. These guys felt that my story was simply too big for one movie, 
They saw it as a whole TV series, and they commissioned a pilot episode. So I wrote the pilot and nine more episodes. And last July, they flew me out again to Los Angeles, and we filmed the pilot. Along with scenes from Double Wife, we shot a couple scenes from the sequel to Double Wife that I created called The Paul T. Goldman Chronicles. Let me tell you about The Chronicles. When I found a crinkled up photo of a young Asian girl in Royce Rocco's trash, the girl he was smuggling into the country to be a prostitute in his ring, my heart sank. I started reading everything I could find out about global child sex trafficking. You know, it is estimated that over 800,000 people are trafficked annually, most of them children who end up in brothels, and that this illegal industry is second only to the illegal arms trade in illegal profits. The thing is, you don't see too much about this in the papers and nightly newscasts. So what could I do? I asked myself. The answer was the Paul T. Goldman Chronicles, the fiction sequel to the non-fiction Double Wife, Double Life. The Chronicles are exciting and entertaining, but they serve a greater purpose. The readers of Double Wife and the Chronicles are part of a sizable and growing community of people who are as repulsed as I by human trafficking. So how did I make a sequel to Double Wife, you're probably wondering. Here's what I did. I didn't change anything in Double Wife. I thought back to Chapter 12, the chapter where I discovered the international sex trafficking operations of Royce Rocco. So in my screenplay, I changed the ending. The last scene now has Paul and Johnny being kidnapped by the mob, the true owners of Royce's ring. They get rescued by Dan Hardwick, an ex-government type of guy, and he recruits Paul to bring down Royce's international operations. Paul follows the leads and begins in London, then Moscow, St. Petersburg, and Greece. Basically, I turned Paul from an ordinary guy who unknowingly married a hooker into James Bond. Who wouldn't want to be James Bond? Let's take a look at this. Here's the first Chronicles book called Target. There are two more already written called Danger and Payback. Obviously in Payback I get my revenge. A few weeks before the pilot was to be shot, the producers asked me to come up with some ideas as to what Paul would wear. I did some research and sent the costume department some photos. This is what they came up with. The crew called this my badass outfit. I call it the warrior. I'll be right back. So what do you think? You can also download Target on Amazon for the same $2.99 as Double Wife and I'll put a link below. So let's take a look at it. When I was living in California and Florida, I never dreamed that I'd return to live even temporarily in Rhode Island, where I'd grown up. Nor did I think that coming home would actually be something that I would welcome. But after the ordeal of my brief marriage and divorce from Audrey Munson, coming home was just what I needed. After all, I never expected that I'd be so thoroughly duped by a genuine con woman. When your sense of trust has been ripped to shreds, surrounding yourself with the people you've known your whole life is the best way to recalibrate and regain the ability to open up to others. Taking my son to my childhood home and spending time with my parents, my brothers and their families, I found myself thinking about who I was, who I had been, and who I would be in the future. Family helped me center myself, but I realized I had to make some changes. Before I thought of dating again or entering into any new relationship, I knew that I'd have to spend more time building trust, and that I'd have to, quote, trust but verify, unquote, with everyone outside my immediate family. With these resolutions in mind, and with the routine of work for me and school for Johnny, I began to feel like the last few years of my life had just been a bad dream. The strained relationship with a deceitful woman, the tawdry details of her deception and life of crime, all of it 
seem to fade away into unreality. Then, one Wednesday morning, a phone call brought reality rushing back with a vengeance. Okay, so here's the current situation. The powers that be in Hollywood are still deciding whether to make this movie or TV series. If it gets made, I think we all know it's going to be a big hit. And more importantly, it will increase public awareness of sex trafficking. This worldwide blockbuster movie or TV series will reach hundreds of millions of people. That's quite a sizable army for change. People will speak out and force governments to double triple the amount of money that they're spending to fight this horrific problem. I ask you to join with me, and together we will change the world. Become a warrior in the fight against sex trafficking. It's really easy. All you have to do is click on the subscribe button below, and we will show the people in Hollywood that there is a huge audience for this project. Well, that's about it for this first episode. In future episodes, I'll be reading more of Double Wife and Target, and we'll take a look at the world press to see the current state of sex trafficking, the victories that law enforcement has been having, and where there's more work that needs to be done. Again, thanks to everybody for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe below, which is the first volley in our attack on the sex traffickers. And until next time, onward warriors.